My name is Quentin DeBolt, and this is my research, um, Statistical and Anomaly Analysis of Climate Trends in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. This study is to provide a comprehensive report of historical climate changes of the Dallas-Fort Worth metropolitan area as it pertains to temperature and precipitation trends. So, um, weather is the day-to-day -day variability in uh, precipitation and temperature variables. Climate is kind of a generalized overarching theme, so it takes the average of those conditions in order to gain an understanding of what climate conditions would look like for any given area. As we experience a changing climate uh, worldwide, um, we start to see different trends in different areas of climate. <clears throat> and so um, NASA conducted a GISS surface temperature analysis um, for a global scale to see how the global climate was changing. And I wanted to conduct a study that was similar, but for a localized area to see if it differed from the trends seen globally. Um, my data was derived from the National Weather Service station at the Dallas Fort Worth International Airport. This data was available online through Now Data. <clears throat> this data was uh, recorded in Excel, converted from Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius for temperature, and similarly inches to centimeters for precipitation. Um, and then we established a reference period to compare the uh, different uh, variables to um, in order to establish an anomaly. So. This is our anomaly in temperature over the course of our time period, shows a positive trend. Um, this is our three decade monthly average temperature, which also shows a higher trend for the most recent three decade time period. Our precipitation graphs show, this is our total yearly precipitation, which shows a positive trend with a slightly larger increase in precipitation for the most recent um, five to 10 years. And then this increase is also seen in the daily mean precipitation um, for the most recent three decade time period. There's also the monthly anomaly. So not only is it reflected here that it is an overall change instead of a seasonal change, but each of these um, spring trends about a degree Celsius warmer than our reference time period of 1951 to 1980. Similar for summer, about 1 to 1.5 degrees. Fall is also 1 degree Celsius. And then winter is of particular concern because it is trending at about 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius warmer than our reference time period. So these changes in temperature and um, precipitation anomalies can be contributed to two things that we've drawn to our conclusion to. The first is being global climate change. So the IPCC's assessment report six shows that anthropogenic activity <clears throat> is causing climate change through increase in surface temperature as well as increased precipitation. So anthropogenic activity can be uh, anything from uh, emitting greenhouse gases to other sorts of activity that could affect these factors. The other contributing factor is the urban heat island effect. So DFW's population has multiplied over 30 times since the beginning of this uh, time period used in this study. Um, and the correlating increase in urban development, so changes in land use, um, can create a rise in the urban heat island index. Possible errors include extreme weather events. So abnormal weather conditions can create extremes that affect yearly temperature averages. However, since we use such large time periods in our decade and three decade time periods, the um, noise of that data was severely reduced. There was also the movement of the weather station. So um, although <clears throat> uh, the National Weather Service considers this a complete record, the uh, data, data record is from four differing locations over the course of this time period used in the research. So in conclusion, there's a high likelihood that the average temperature in DFW will continue to rise, reflecting the global trends, um, as well as the precipitation, and the frequency of extreme weather events could increase. <clears throat> so as we see a change in climate, our former climate models tend to break down, which makes it less uh, easy to predict these extreme weather events, which is important for environmental health and safety experts. So we need to gain a better understanding of how our climate is changing to build better models in order to predict these events and mitigate their effects.